tonight, a good chunk of the country is feeling hot under the collar as an intense and what forecasters say will be a prolonged heat wave starts to take a dangerous hold across the middle of the country. By tomorrow at this time, temperatures will soar into the triple digits as far north as Minnesota. And no, this is not par for the course in July. This month, we have seen more than 900 temperatures meet or exceed all-time records. And of course, July is only half over. From Atlanta, NBC's Charles Hadlock begins our coverage. Texas is already in its worst drought in decades. And again... Back here at home, the heat wave that began yesterday is bringing even more oppressive conditions to much of the Midwest. Temperatures are in the 90s and higher from the Gulf Coast all the way up to the border with Canada. We're joined now by the Weather Channel's Eric Fisher, who's in Lake Harriet, Minnesota, near Minneapolis. Eric, what's it like there this evening? Uh, it is swampy out here, Lester, that is for sure. Dew points near 80, that is downright tropical. Everyone was dealing it in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area. We just began. will be the first heat wave here in the city. Heat index values topped out around 150 degrees. That's what it actually feels like for your body to be out. That makes dangerous conditions for anyone who's spending extended amounts of time outdoors, and we buy certainly... We're not alone. Take a look across the country, anywhere from the high plains down to the Gulf Coast, even right now as we speak, heat index values between 100 and 120 degrees. For some, this is new. For some, this is an ongoing problem. But is it going to change? As we head forward into the next week, big area of high pressure centered right in the middle of America is slowly going to shift off to the east. That will bring heat back to the mid-Atlantic, down to the deep south and into the Carolinas as well. We'll see a little relief here in the Twin Cities, especially by the time we get toward Thursday and Friday, but it will be a little relief and there'll be no relief in the southern plains. Places like Oklahoma and Texas, some cities like Wichita Falls, Texas, have seen over 50 days of triple-digit heat, almost double what they average for an entire year. Then we're only in the middle of July. We are in the middle of summertime, so you expect to see some heat. So many ask the question, is this rare? Well, in a place like Minneapolis, the answer would be no. They see wild extremes, well below zero temperatures during the winter, triple-digit heat during the summertime. But in the southern plains, with some of those numbers stacking up, we will be shattering records for perhaps the next couple of months to come, and there is no change there in sight. Weather is becoming more extreme. The floods are wetter, and the droughts are drier, said a spokesman for the National Weather Service and that's going to have real implications for society and the future generations. The latest heat wave is set to press on this week across the central United States with high humidity adding to the misery. This will likely be the most significant heat wave the region has experienced in at least the last five years, the National Weather Service said. Heat indexes are predicted to stay in the triple digits and the oppressive temperatures are likely to spread to the east coast later in the week. Heat advisories and warnings were in place in at least 18 states from Texas to Michigan as temperatures and humidity combined to make being outside uncomfortable for millions. When the humidity is factored into the mix it will feel like 110 degrees in some parts of the nation. This is unusual, said a spokesman for the Weather Service. There's no sugar coating anything here. Temperatures in places such as Dodge City, Kansas, and Woodward, Oklahoma were forecast to be above 100 degrees through Saturday. Wichita, Kansas will see temperatures higher than 100 degrees through Sunday. This heat wave is particularly dangerous because many of the areas under its umbrella are not used to prolonged high temperatures and humidity, according to the Weather Service. Plus, the overnight temperatures are not expected to dip low enough to provide any reprieve. The cumulative effects, when it doesn't cool down overnight, you get no relief. According to the Weather Service outlook, the central U.S., from North Dakota to Texas and east to the Carolinas, excluding parts of the northeast and southern Florida, will see excessive heat through July 29th. The extreme scorching weather is the latest in a series of meteorological problems to strike the Midwest in recent months. The list includes the devastating tornado that ripped through Joplin, Missouri in late May, taking nearly 160 people 
in destroying more than 8,000 homes and other structures, as well as the ongoing flooding along the Missouri River, which has triggered weeks of evacuations and other emergency measures from Montana through Missouri. Texas A&M University researchers determined the period from February to June was the driest such period on record in Texas, with a statewide average of 4.26 inches of rain. The next driest February to June stretch was in 1917, with a 6.45 inch rain average. In other words, it's the driest it's ever been in that part of the country. Last week, some 50,000 chickens died at a North Carolina farm after the power went off for less than an hour, and drought is affecting at least 14 other states. Yes, climate change is real, and it's happening right now in many different ways all around the world. Everything is connected, and everything is numbered. It's also about what kind of world are we leaving to the future generations. This, too, is another physical manifestation of the book of Revelation. Revelation, chapter 10, verse 5. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven. 6. And swore by him that lives forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that therein are, and the earth and the things that therein are, and the sea, and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. 7. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he has declared to his servants the prophets. Revelation chapter 16 verse 5 And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which are and was and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. 6. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. 7. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. 8. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, Power was given unto him to scorch humans with fire. 9. And humans were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which has power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. It's time now for all prophecy to be fulfilled, and this is what I feel, think, and see. The fourth angel is sounding. Watch the weather changes.